First of all, today, I, my thought has been on uh, God's relationship with man. I, I would like, I feel I need to say this, first of all, that uh, God's desire for man has always been restoration. To restore man to a good relationship with him. I know we have sinned. All I've seen come short of the glory of God. And I know the wages of sin is death. But I want us to understand that when God looks at a sinful man, his greatest desire is not to punish that man, but his greatest desire is to save that man. God's relationship to us and God's work with us as human being has always been predicated on love. Our relationship with God is predicated on God's love for us. The most widely read scripture in the word of God is John 3.16 and there is a reason for that. Because it gives us God's intention and God's means to achieve his purpose. In John 3.16, we read these words. Because God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. God's purpose for mankind is to save man from the pit where he put himself when he sinned against God. Sin causes man to perish. Perish from a relationship. Perish from that oneness that was supposed to exist between him and God. But be saved and receive everlasting life. Now the love of God, the divine love of God is the greatest thing that has ever happened to the universe. And we must, as individuals, as families, as people that re have relation with one another, we can only rely on the love of God. And I want to show us today that love unifies people. Love unifies people with God. Love unifies people with one another. And it is love that only can ensure that families survive. First of all, we, we need not belabor the point. Our families are what they are because of love. Families begin because of love. Whether we understand the true nature of love or not, at least one type of love brings a man and a woman together and they become husband and wife. And because of that initial love between those two individuals, children are born in that family and we are able to grow in that family because of at least one aspect of love. In the Greek we have uh, at least four major categories of love. We have got love between a man and a woman, which we call eros, from which we get erotic. Re erotic, that is a basis of romantic love. And then we have, uh, we have storge, from which we have uh, love within families, the kind of love that exists between siblings. If I'm getting this right, then we have philia, from which we have love between friends. You know, we just, re even when you are in school or in college or in the village, you have got some people that you get along with and you just like or love. Now that is philia, that is love between friends. And then you have the highest form of love, which is love unconditional love, love in spite of, divine love, agape, which we call the God kind of love. It is the God kind of love which is the highest form of love which we should pursue, but without ignoring the other types of love. 
But if a marriage, if a family is to endure all and is to succeed in spite of all, then we must develop the God kind of love within that marriage and within that family. We must grow to a point where we can love our brothers and our sisters. We can love our parents in spite of some of the negative things that they may do to us. We must strive, always strive, to get to a point where we do not just love because of. You see, love between brothers and sisters in the home, the love between siblings, is love because we share one source, because we have one blood, because we are related. It is love because of. It's because we have we have uh, sucked the same breast because we, are, we share the same father or mother. That love is conditional. It's good, but it's not good enough. The love between our friends is because we like them or because they treat us well. It's a conditional love. It's good, but it's not good enough. If we can get love in spite of if we can get the God kind of love, we in the world will have better relationships. And I want to say it's not enough to have to love your brother because you, are, you share the same parent. I know they say blood is thicker than water. I don't know how, I don't know how that comes, but that's what they have told us. We need to develop a better kind of love if we are going to survive all situations of life, we need the God kind of love. We need agape. As individuals, my brethren, and I, before we come to the close of this service, I would want us to get to 1 Corinthians chapter number 13. And when we get to that part of scripture, I would like for us to replace the word charity or love in that portion with our own names and measure and find out how we rate in the sight of God. But I want us to turn our Bibles, if we may, to First Thessalonians uh, chapter number 3 to see the intention of God and what God wants with us. And reading verse number 11 and verse number 12, he says, Now, and this is a prayer, this is a prayer the apostle is praying to God and this gives us God's purpose. He says, now God himself and our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ direct our way unto you and the Lord make you, the Lord make us. My prayer is that God helps us and makes us to increase and abound in love one toward God another in many families today people are drawing away slowly by slowly away from one another as people grow up they tend to and when we allow the fallen nature in our lives all what that does is to draw us away from one another and you find even the close relationship that existed between you and your brother and your sister begins to wane, it, it begins to reduce and you see one another less and less and no wonder, I say no wonder, no wonder some of us cannot even say our ancestry beyond seven. What is your name? Who is your father and mother? And then who are the parents of your parent? And do you know them by name? Those are your grandparents. Who was the father and mother of your grandparent? Those are your great grandparents. But most of us cannot go beyond that. Most of us cannot say our great, great grandparent. Now all those people have got children coming down. Do you know them? Do you feel an association with them? So I'm telling you as time goes on and some of us drift away too early 
But if we have the divine love of God, if we have a care for one another, our families can grow longer than they are today. Some of us cannot even see eye to eye with our own blood brother and our own blood sister and cannot even sit down to share a cup of coffee or tea or whatever it may be. We must break the curse. We must break the curse of hate with a blessing of love. We must begin not only to love because of, but begin to love in spite of. We must learn, like Jesus said, love your enemies. Now, now that is love for your enemies. That's not even love your brother. How is it that, how can we achieve love for our enemies when you can't even love your sibling? How can we even try to love our enemies enemy and I want to I, I want to appeal to that scripture that says and do good to them those who despitefully use you Matthew give me that scripture probably after this how can we achieve the will of God to love our enemies and do good to those who use us in a bad way how can we do that when we cannot even love our own brother and our own sister or our own Christian brothers and sisters. There are people in the house of God that cannot even talk to one another. These things, my brethren, ought not to be. Matthew 5.44, let's turn there. Now, as we turn there to Matthew 5.44, look at where we are, 1 Thessalonians 4.12. And the Lord make you to increase. And abound in love one to another. God's desire is that your love for one another increases and abounds to be deeper. That, that the Lord may make you to increase and abound in love one towards another. And toward all men even as we do towards you. The apostle say, says we increase in love towards you. We are bound in love towards you. Now as our love increases towards you, we need to have see you loving one another more and more. And not only one another, but also to all men. This world can be a better place if we love one another. There is no way Russia can attack Ukraine if they love them. There is no way I can speak behind your back. I can gossip you if I love you. The fights that we have one with another would not be there if we increased in love one toward another. It's not possible. And that's why Jesus here in Matthew 5, 43, you have heard that it has been said, thou shalt love thy neighbor and hate thine enemy. A majority of us are still there. Where it used to be said, love your neighbor, hate your enemy. But people that have experienced the love of God, people that have genuinely been touched by the love of God, they act different. Jesus said, but, because it's a shift of gears. You are going in that direction, in this particular direction, and Jesus says, but we have to turn around. He says, but I say unto you, love your Enemies, bless them that curse you. Mm -hmm. You've done this to me. I'll deal with you cacamoniously. Some people even say, so you hate me, I hate you. You abuse me, I abuse you. That's not the Christian way. And Some of us are drawing wider and wider away and away from one another that is not the will of God. Let me read for you today the will of God. And even if you find it difficult to walk that path, ask God by his grace to begin helping you. I say this world can become a better place. We are in five months of politics in this country and campaigns. And people are beginning to hate one another. As if your vote was washed by the blood of Jesus Christ. As if when that person becomes president in this country, they are going to be of any help to you or any use to you. Wake up from your sleep. No politician will ever help you. God doesn't help you. No politician, no government will ever help you. These people 
are making applications for a job. That's all they want. A job. They want you to employ them. And you fight one another because of it. People are looking for a job and you want to fight over it. And so they are going to pay you when they, are, when they receive their pay. It doesn't matter who becomes president in this country. They are not Jesus. They are not God. And they don't care about us. They are doing it for their own sakes and their own interests. But here we hate one another over them. Here we divide ourselves because of them. But I say unto you, love your enemies. Bless them that curse you. Do good to them that hate you. And pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you. That you may be so that you may be. If you don't love your brother, you don't love your sister, are you really a child of God? How to know for sure that God has transformed you and has translated you and has made you one of his own is when you can love your enemies. That you can pray for those who despitefully use you. Those that hate you. If you can bless them, then you know for sure you are a child of God. That's how we know. That you may be the children of your father which is in heaven. For if you love them which love you, if you only do good to them who do good to you, what's the difference between you and the gang? For even the robbers and the gangsters, they love those of their group. And if you love them which love you, what reward have you? Do not even the publicans the same? And if you salute your brethren only, I'm surprised there are some brothers that cannot even greet other brothers. Some sisters born of the same mother cannot even say hi to one another. They look at one another like strangers. It's a shame. I think we have voted the devil in. We may claim God to be ours, but the real God that is ours is the devil himself. And if you salute your brethren only, what do you more than the others? Do not even the public so? Verse 48. Be ye therefore mature. Be ye therefore perfect. Grow up even as your father who is in heaven is perfect. The apostle John writing John 3.16 and the letters of John that we very quickly going to look at here. First John if we may. First letter of John very quickly here. Put on the balances and we have been found wanting. We know, verse 14, that we have passed from death to life because we love the brethren. That's how you know. You know you are really a child of God and that you have passed on from death to life because you love the brethren. He that loveth not his brother abides in death. Whosoever hateth his brother is a murderer. And you know that no murderer has eternal life abiding in him. Hereby perceive we the love of God because he laid down his life for us and we ought to lay down our lives for the brethren. Some of those, some of those small little disagreements between brethren, we need just to have one person grow up and say, I am sorry, please forgive me. Let's love one another. Draw a circle in your notebook. And put a mark in the middle of that circle. And in that middle of the circle, that is God. That's Jesus in the middle of that circle. All of us are on that line making the circle. Look at one point of that circle. Put a dot and another one opposite it. And see the distance between those two dots on that circle. That's how separate human beings are. But... When we begin coming close to God, now draw a line from one dot coming to the middle and another line from that dot coming to the middle. The closer we are to the middle, which is God, which is Christ, the closer we become one to another. The more we love God, the more we submit to God, the closer we come to God, the closer we get to one another. The love of God brings unity among men. 
Love for God. Loving God. The more we draw closer to God, the more we come closer to one another. And you can draw as many lines from the outer circle and the more people draw close to God, the more we become one, the more we are unified, the more we love one another. There is no other key to unity in the family. There is no other key to unity in the church. There is no other key to unity in the nation except loving God. There isn't. You stay farther from God. You stay far from one another. But the more you draw closer to God, the more you get closer to one another. The love of God unifies mankind. Whether it is at home, whether it is in the church, or whether it is in the family. No other person could understand this better than John. John and his brother James were called by Jesus the sons of thunder. And at one time, when people were not coming to Jesus and welcoming them, John and his brother James asked Jesus, Can you let us call fire from heaven and consume these people? And Jesus told him, You know not what spirit you are of. Luke chapter 9. Having such kind of a spirit, still having such kind of a spirit that sought destruction of other people, Jesus still loved him. So John knew what the love of Christ meant for him because Jesus loved John when John hated people. Luke chapter 9 and uh, verse 52 and sent, Jesus sent messengers before his face and they went and entered into a village of the Samaritans to make ready for him. And they did not receive him because his face was as though he would go to Jerusalem. And when his disciples James and John saw this, they said, Lord, will thou that we command fire to come down from heaven and consume them even as Elijah did? But he turned and rebuked them and said, You know not what manner of spirit you are of. And someone needs to turn to one of us and tell us, You know not what kind of spirit you are of hating your sister and hating your brother. You know not what kind of a spirit you are of. You know not how far the devil has put you into his pocket. For the Son of Man is not come to destroy men's lives, but to save them. In 1 John chapter number 4, reading scripture verse number 19, after the apostle John had passed through this experience with Jesus and experienced the love of Jesus towards him, he says in verse 19, we love him because he first loved us. He first loved us when we were unlovable and he taught us by example. It's a high time you begin living by example to your siblings. Love them. They may say what they are saying about you. They may have a gossip running around the community and, the situ and, and around the people that you are or you do or whatever, whatever it may be. Love them in spite. Forgive them in spite. Bless them in spite. We love him because he first loved us. The man say, I love God and hated his brother. He's a liar. For he that loveth not his brother, whom he has seen, how can he love God? He has never seen. Verse 10. Herein is love. Not that we loved God, but that he loved us. And sent his son to be the propitiation for our sins. Beloved, if God so loved us, we ought also to love one another. Praise the name of the Lord our God. And finally, I want us to turn to 1 Corinthians chapter number 13. I want us to take time here individually later on on our own from verse number 4. If you have an authorized King James Version, it will be reading charity. If you have any other, it will be reading love. Now that lady known as charity can continue reading charity, but that charity will be herself. If you are Peter, put in Peter. If you are Mary, put Mary. If you are Daniel, put Daniel. Now let's read with Onesimus in mind. Onesimus suffers long and he is kind. Onesimus envieth not. Onesimus vaunteth not himself. Is not puffed up. Onesimus does not behave himself unseemly. He seeks not his own. He is not easily provoked. Thinks no evil of anyone. Onesimus 
rejoices not in iniquity, but rejoices in the truth. Onesimus bears all things. Onesimus believes all things. He hopes all things. Onesimus endureth all things. Onesimus never faileth. Let's read this with our name. I've used brother Onesimus. You can use your name. Find out how well do you score? How well do you fit in those qualifications? Ask God to bring these qualities of love into your life by his spirit and by his grace. Beloved, let us love one another for love is of God. He that does not love does not know God. Let us pray. Blessed and everlasting Father. Lord, I know it is not easy to love, especially love those who despitefully use us. Those that speak evil of us. Those that sometimes plot evil against us. But Lord, we know this is your will. And we can only ask that you give us your grace. By your spirit, help us, Lord. By your grace, help us, Lord. Help us, Lord, to show this love in a practical way to one another in the church, in the fellowship, in the family, in society, and in the world. Help us, Lord, in Jesus' name.